Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott, and I wanted to return to George Van Tassel. We've been reading from his amazing book, The Council of Seven Lights. This is broken up into 10 chapters, and each sort of has a channeling and some incredible information, very consistent with the law of one material. We've discussed George Van Tassel in the past. There's a lot of information that you can find on him. What we know from the Law of One Materials, at the very beginning, they did communicate with him, Ra did, and a lot of this information is from those beginning stages. At some point in time, he polarized negatively and they left him. But the interesting thing is Van Tassel's Integraton project, which he created, was this beautiful architectural building that used sound that was supposed to heal people. But his writing is very, very interesting. And today we're going to read the chapter on the sons of God. The sun is one of the most amazing and fascinating things to me. When I see and feel and look up at the sun, to me it feels like I'm looking at God. That is the center of creation for this solar system. And when you look in the past, when people were worshipers of the sun, I get it. I totally get it. I think that is where the power is at. Sometimes I find myself talking to the sun when I want to talk to the creator. And so there's this really interesting chapter, the sons of God, where more information is given about the sons and their nature in creation. The sons of God by George Van Tassel from the council of seven lights. The sun is an evolved planet in its progressive state of becoming space. An expanding universe must have something to expand from. The sun is not becoming smaller by combustion, fission, or fusion. It is growing larger by digestion of the matter it encounters in the lines of primary light energy. The sun gives off only a very small percentage of the energy it is thus acquiring. Matter, or mass, cannot give off only but a small percentage of its actual total potential energy even in the famed atomic bombs. The energy given off by any fuel or matter is always less than the substance which went into its making. Why is this? The answer is because mind also went into the making of all created things. Mind is neutral. Mind cannot give off energy. It can only direct the flow and action of energy. Universal mind permeates all things. Each person uses the mind of God according to his or her ability to get into it deeper. All things that are or ever will be already exist in the universal mind. None can penetrate into the universal mind beyond their own acquired capability. On the other hand, God cannot do more for you than you are capable of doing for yourself by directing the universal mind. When scientists discover that the core of the proton in an atom is square, then they will realize that the body in the sun is also square. The cubic minerals in their crystallized state are of neutral polarity on a negative surface such as the earth. They can be brought into polarity, however, by exposure to light, pressure, or charging. The body of the sun was brought into cubic form by the fact that its axes were parallel to the three lines of light energy. The infinite light universal mind or the g line of light centers one axis the positive a and the negative b lines center the other two axes they are all at 90 degree angles to each other the sunspots are discharges of secondary magnetic electrostatic force released into the actosphere and photosphere by the rotating corners of the square core body these discharges are magnetic exhaust effects common to any body in motion. The sunspots are apparent in the 10 degrees to 30 degree north and south latitudes on the sun to our vision. The sunspots are exhausted when the discharged polarized matter is neutralized in the photosphere or the actosphere. They appear black to the earth telescopes because they hide the effect of fusion taking place between the positive photosphere and the negative actosphere. The positive photosphere to the positive sun body is the equivalent of the negative atmosphere to the negative earth body. They each carry the same polarity as the body which they surround. 
the fact that the rotational period of the sun appears to be of different speeds at different latitudes is due to the spiral effects of the primary light energy losing speed in its travel to the poles. The apparent 10-day differential in rotation between the equator of the sun and its poles is only observed in the force field of the actosphere. Viewed from the point of any of the three axes, a cube will appear square around its perimeter. Many square positive bodies in space do not rotate because their axes remain parallel to the lines of primary light. The bodies that do rotate were placed in motion when their axes were thrown out of parallel with the lines of light by a bend or warp in the lines of primary energy. This caused the positive square body to start rotating by unbalanced polarity opposition within itself. The polar axis of the sun is now through two opposite corners of the cubic sun body. The cube remained motionless in the lines of primary energy like a compass needle as long as it was in polarity balance. Once the body was in motion, the lines of force trying to reach rest spiraled to the two points of least motion. This established an equator and opposite poles at two opposite corners. In this position, the positive polarity half and the negative polarity half of the sun each has three corners discharging at approximately 20 degrees each side of the equator. These rotating corners are displacing matter and discharging energy. This is what causes the sunspots. Cut an art gum eraser or a piece of soap into a cube and insert common pins into the top opposite corners. Then make a line around the cube midway between the pole points or pins. Assume one half of the cube will have four corners in it of one polarity. Then if you look at the opposite corners, you will find they are all on the other side of the equator line. You will also see that each half of the equator line is a three-sided pyramid or prism. The polarized prismic structure of the rotating sun generates secondary light in its positive photosphere. The negative actosphere which we see as a ball of fire is activated in opposition to the photosphere by primary lines of light energy. Space is the cubes of matter that are stable because their three axes are parallel to the three lines of light. Motion is only manifested by unbalanced matter, whether it be a sun, planet, atom, or person. Desire for rest is what causes the intelligence in matter, in motion, to seek balance and become again part of the infinite intelligence, which is still. Space is composed of balanced cubes of intelligence at rest. The lines of primary light energy parallel the eight edges and two axes of the cubes of space in two directions and the infinite light parallels the four remaining edges and one axis. All unbalanced positive bodies are emitting light. All unbalanced negative bodies are absorbing light. Cubes are unbalanced positive bodies. Negative bodies are unbalanced spheres. Each can contain or be a part of the other. As long as one polarity is predominant, the predominant polarity will be to determine whether the object is spherical or cubical in shape. Astronomers state that the light from some of the stars is coming from so many hundreds and thousands of light years away that the star could be burned out and the light would still be visible on the Earth. This is predicated on the idea that the light is still traveling after the emanating body is no longer there. This is erroneous. If the stars were not still emitting light and were not there, you could not see it. Telescopes and eyes do not see. They are only a system of lenses through which light passes. The mind sees. You can picture things you have experienced in the mind with your eyes closed. The same infinite light of intelligent mind centers every atom, star, planet, and manifested being. When astronomers look through a telescope or people observe without one, anything you can see is there. The instant, infinite light of the universal mind that centers you and what your mind sees cannot record or vision something that is not there. Negative physical vision only records to the negative physical brain the illusion that the sun is round. All that the limited physical vision is recording is the effect 
of the secondary light emissions from the force field in fusion around the sun. Physical negative vision can only see reflected positive light from another negative body or negative light reflected from another positive body. The actosphere, being of negative polarity, is spherical. Therefore, the negative physical vision of records it as a ball of fire, were it not for the activation of the sun's actosphere by the positive and negative lines of primary light energy, you would not see the sun at all with physical vision. Though I scatter my seeds of light throughout my garden of space, I determine which shall grow to be a star and which shall represent my image. Though all my seeds are light of me, each brings about a pattern individual in destiny of my doing. Though in the scattering of my seeds, some may fall on barren soil, the segregation is within the knowing which shall bear fruit. For in the essence of my wisdom I breathe not the breath of life, that all my seeds shall grow at once. Rather do I select them, that I may express myself each moment throughout eternal time. And though my seeds are pure in light and love of me, I know all shall not grow to bring about the fruit in perfection. For unto each seed I rendered individuality and right to choose. O man, O mortal man, my oneness I bring about in individuality that I may scatter my parts and express myself. Though all things I have created in balanced opposites, I remain the centering separator. Though I have made my gender two, though my polarity is divided, I test my strength on my right and my left. Though man has chosen to further separate my expression of love, though man has chosen to divide the roads to me, though man has brought self-interest into my expression, I still maintain the balance centering my interchange of powers. If one should sit on my right hand in the love of me, I shall balance that love upon my left hand in equality. I cast out barriers to face the beings of you, that I may temper all my parts. Though I have given all alike from thought of me, many cannot reach the door that guides their destiny to paths unfurled in light. And though they lose their way in darkness, seeking, I retrieve the whole and cast my mold again, never losing any single portion. For I am soul of thee, O man, and light and darkness too. And though my light of right extends through all eternity, I back the light with darkness, that recognition may be yours. Energy and matter are opposite poles of the same thing. Matter can be converted into energy, but always with mass loss. Energy, in being converted to matter, will always register a gain. The fact that all celestial bodies are conversions to matter of energy in solution in space is evidenced by their different densities. Scientists have assumed that if a rocket could be propelled outside of Earth's gravity, it would coast on momentum indefinitely. This is based on the assumption that space is void. If space were void, no system would hold its bodies relative to each other in their orbits. The time field of the sun establishes a zero field of time relative to the planet's opposition of hemispherical polarities. The opposition of the Earth's polarities relative to the energy charge of its mass is what establishes its position in the solar system. A small planet can be of greater density than a larger one. Its composition of the elements may be such, however, that its charge relative to its mass may be less. The time field of the Earth is at the magnetic equator. At the Earth's surface, it is narrowed down to about the thickness of a razor blade. Surface land is of greater magnetic potential than the oceans. The Earth's magnetic equator, therefore, will be inclined to veer toward the major land masses. This wave in the magnetic equator stabilizes as it recedes from the surface. The angle of divergence is about 5 degrees of arc, making a V-shaped cross-section as it gains altitude from the surface. The area composing this V-shaped cross-section is the Earth's time field. If you could stay in this area a few thousand miles from the Earth's surface, time would cease to exist. Your body polarities would reach balance and you would become pure mind and infinite in your scope of everything. It is the time field that separates polarities in their different speeds of apparent rotation. 
relative to the earth the positive and negative lines of primary energy are working in opposition the negative lines of force are causing the earth to rotate while the positive lines of force are trying to stop it from rotating the speed of the earth's rotation is the result of the differential between the speed of the positive lines of force and the speed of the negative lines of force relative to the charge of the earth's mass the positive and negative lines of force fill space with matter in solution being in solution it must be termed energy because it is not condensed by polarity predominance the time field ends at the outer limit of the earth's force field if it were possible to alter the time field by changing it relative to the earth's magnetic equator we could direct the planet's course out of the solar system or cause it to assume another orbit elsewhere in the system the spacecraft are controlled in their travel by oscillating the time field with the thought force causing the positive and negative fields to move the ship's mass relative to the direction of the lines of primary energy earth scientists do not understand negative electrical currents or fields as the positive lines of force manifest results though conductors the negative currents and fields can only be activated through non-conductors the only true insulation that will separate the opposite polarities of fields is time the earth's people only register time because the planet rotates and orbits they assume that time goes by time is infinite and all that people on a planet can register is the revolving planet passing through time the people are in motion on the planet so they assume that time is in motion actually they are moving through time with no visible means of registering the stillness of time if time ever moves it will cause everything in the universe to collide and all condensed energy or matter would go back into solution in space when the scientists try to push a rocket through space by brute force instead of going with the currents of primary energy carrying matter in solution in space they will discover that matter in solution or space is anything but void the speed of light established at 186,000 miles per second is not its speed it is the speed of the positive a lines of force that extend throughout space the speed of the negative b lines of force at 90 degrees to the positive lines is 202,000 miles per second the speed of magnetism is the combined speeds of the positive and negative lines of force or 388,000 miles per second the difference between the positive and negative lines of force is 16,000 miles per second the spacecraft use this differential to cycle or phase their power this accounts for their appearance of skipping their ships are caused to attract or repel the lines of force which are at right angles to their direction of travel the spacecraft can move through our dense lower atmosphere at many thousands of miles per hour because they bring their own space with them the force field around each ship does not allow our air to enter the field consequently the ship does not get hot by friction the ship inside of its own force field is protected by the field from debris in space from air in density and from sound shock waves as no sound can penetrate through the field they travel silently through our skies except at very slow speeds or when hovering they transmit a humming throbbing tone the field increases its resistance and strength when the speed of the ship increases space is infiltrated with debris no principle of rocket propelled missiles or ships is practicable outside of our earth's force field as rockets do not create a protective field around themselves some of the debris from size of grains of rice to rocks larger than buildings are traveling at speeds of hundreds of miles per second our planet operates in a self-generated magnetic field meteorites do not burn out in our atmosphere because they encounter oxygen they disintegrate in the earth's protective field of force if the meteorite is negatively charged it disintegrates in the positively charged strata of the force field our spacecraft the earth operates in a field vortex of the sun the earth is a combination battery generator and motor our atmosphere serves as a brush a field and a bearing our heat comes from our dense surface atmosphere the only reason we feel more heat on this side toward the sun is because the positive sun causes a brush effect in our negative surface atmosphere 
The crust commutator is warmed for resistance and friction while both rotating the planet as a motor and generating the force field. Gravity is not attraction nor magnetism. Gravity is resistant pressure brought about in all objects, bodies, or substances by the lines of force penetrating them toward the center of the Earth. The A-positive male projective lines of force are trying to reach discharge or impregnation in the negative female crust. The B-negative female receptive lines of force are trying to reach fecundation or productive powers from the positive male core. The two lines of force A and B are working together in opposition to supply power for the continuous functions on and in the sphere and atmosphere while the father centers the balance control through the G lines of light. Since the negative lines of force move faster than the positive lines, a negative body will always rotate counterclockwise from one viewpoint, and a positively charged body will rotate clockwise from the same viewpoint. The measurable speed of positive or negative lines of light energy will vary with the orbit of any planet. Measurements of light energy of positive polarity will conform to the orbit diameter of any given planet. Measurements of negative polarity light energy will exceed the orbit diameter. Negative light energy cannot be accurately measured from the surface of a negatively charged planet such as the Earth. When the atmosphere of negative nature such as the Earth is balanced by positive charges from fusion particles, it will cause moisture in the atmosphere to pile up at one magnetic pole and recede from the opposite polarity pole. It will cause a charge in the planet's rotation speed and due to germination temperature change, the eventual extinction of life forms that conform to the germination temperature. An excess of positively charged particles in the negative atmosphere will cause a planet to seek balance on new poles. Positive and negative lines of light force are always in an unbalanced state due to their different speeds of travel. When they are interrupted by a body or planet, they bring about motion because of their differential or the desire to reach rest. If the Earth's poles were vertical instead of inclined, the Earth's orbit would be round instead of elliptical. If there were as much land south of the equator as there is north of it, the Earth's axis would not be inclined. Magnetism is not the casual force, but it is the result or exhaust effect of light forces of positive and negative polarity in action. A magnet is not charged with magnetism, it is only serving as a polarity conductor of the lines of light energy passing through it. Both poles will attract a non-polarized conductor. Either pole will attract its opposite polarity or repel a like polarity. Influences of a negative nature lead the minds of humans to try to bring about positive effects. When these positive effects exceed the balance of natural negative charges on a negative planet, then the planet will rebalance itself to conform to the light lines of force. Man is mostly space filled with substance in form. The body does not derive energy from the food assimilated by it. The food is only transformed to become a conductor for light energy passing through the body. Power is only manifested through motion. Controlled power is that which is given direction. The discovery of the wheel gave mankind the means to an endless track of motion. Universal power throughout infinite space is demonstrated in the guided motion of all planets, moons, suns, galaxies, and nebula. None of these are haphazardly flying through space uncontrolled. Their course, orbit, rotation, and separation are maintained by precision interchange of relative power. All bodies in space are motored by primary light energy. Solar emanations and atomic energy are secondary powers or effects of the primary light energy in motion. The cross, in one shape or another, has always been the symbol of spiritual power. Scientifically, spiritual power is unseen power. Spiritual power can only be understood when it is manifest in the seen effect. This seen effect may be either in the range of the physical vision or outside the physical limits. Primary light energy functions in many unlimited conditions and frequencies above and below the limits of physical vision. Everything in space that rotates, orbits, or manifests motion as to direction is powered by primary light energy. 
Wherever a body interrupts the lines of primary light, motion is affected. This is an immutable law. Within the human body is a universe in miniature. The axis of every crystal, atom, planet, or person is centered in unseen light of unlimited extent. The manifested boundaries or surface of any of these are insulated from all others of like polarity. The eternal existence of all of these is encompassed within the center of the axis. The cross is the symbol of power of the opposite polarities. By interrupting the primary lines of positive and negative light energy, a differential is established. By phasing this differential, controlled power is established in motion. This is the long hidden secret of the Maltese cross. Mal means negative tongues of flame or static electricity. Tees means interchange two in one or differential between. When the differential between the positive and negative forces of light energy are controlled by phasing, they result in unlimited power through motion. If the motion exceeds the differential phase, disintegration will result. Electricity is a byproduct of magnetism. Gravity is the resistance pressure set up by the opposition of differential between the casual light energy and the effect magnetism. Though I have set the patterns of my doing all about you, yet you see them not. I scatter seeds of light. I cast the shadows man calls day and shadows of the shadows man calls night in repetition. I have paved the way for man to see has not my pattern stood the test to build another bird a nest again where others were before. Cannot you see, O man of me, do as I say, do as I do, do as I cause the way to be within your understanding of the me in thee. Look to the pattern all around, the fragrance of the essence of my love in flowers you have found, and in the cool beneath the tree there I am to comfort you, and yet you question parts of me. Throughout my being I made thee man to carry on to take the stand in my defense, to build the wall, to scale the fence of destiny, not to follow whims of chance along the side, not to fall beneath the wheels of hate and fear that others may ride in comfort. Only look, feel the essence of my being, absorb me in the breeze, reach me in the sun, my heart is warm, you are the one. Never have I set a pattern to lead you all astray, any fear you feel, O oh man, you make along the way to me, and your arrival is delayed. Your stage is set. The curtain must come down, but only to go up again. The pattern is eternity. Repetition is the grade that leads me, O oh man. From the harvest of my golden grain, I separate the chaff. I break the bonds of freedom, lest man shall undo my works. I bring about a change in cycles, so my balance shall not be disturbed. For when my laws are superseded, then must I strike from out the night and scourge contamination from my being. For I am love, and I am freedom unto all my parts, but no part shall bind me to destruction. So as in times gone past I wreak my wrath, I cleanse my house, I upset my creations, for none shall be above me. Wow, what an amazing chapter. And I'm not going to sit here and explain it because I don't understand. I'm very excited to go back and listen to this after this episode comes out. Soak up some of the information that it gives. The idea is the sun is rotating and what we are seeing is a force field but the sun itself is a cube that's rotating so quickly that it is the sun. There's some very fascinating discussions of the nature of magnetism and the nature of fields that are around us, the way that heat works on the earth, the reasons that the earth is inclined in the way that it is, the way that light works and the lines of force around us. These are all questions I've had about the nature of the universe and its workings and this is seemingly answering very complicated questions, and I would really love if there's any physicists or scientists 
that understand any of the things said in here. Is there anything radical that doesn't make sense or that's been disproven? Because I would be very interested in that. The sun itself is fascinating, but the nature of space is also discussed in this work, claiming that space is made up of cubes of intelligent energy. We don't see these cubes, but at some level they are cubic in form. We understand the sacred geometries all around us and that portions of the sacred geometry of the earth is met with angles of force. So we see a round object, but there's much more to it, just as I suspect our own energy body is the same thing. But I would like to get your interpretation. Please help me to understand this. I don't want to give up on it, but it helps us to understand the sun. It's almost as if he asked raw or a higher entity please explain what the sun really is and they said okay well you might not understand but here it goes and they explain the opposing lines of force and polarities and its nature within all things how it's corresponding to all things the channelings that he has in the middle and at the end of the book so very much remind me of walter russell's the divine iliad speaking in almost the same manner i'd like to get your impressions of it and if you want me to continue to read more, I will. In any case, you can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.